Hello, welcome to Romero Threads on YouTube where it's all about embroidery. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create name badges and how to heat press them on hats. Let's begin with the design and the digitizing face. For name badges, really, the key component is to keep it as basic as possible. All right, so here, I'm going to create an oval shape here. All right, and then here on the bottom right, you can kind of see my um, my height and my width. And this is where I want to set everything up. Uh, 3.5 width. Let's go with a 1.5 height and a 3.5 width. All right, so this is kind of very basic type, mostly all your badges, your kind of your oval type badges. You can always adjust it to whatever size you need it. Okay, so I'm gonna use this as my reference. So here I'm going to add my lettering. Okay, so my names. And we go all the way up here. All right, so since I have the shape of what I want, I'm good here. And I'm just going to put my name, Romero. I'm going to select my favorite font for name tags, okay. Uh, we'll put it in right now and then we'll put in all the options right now in a bit. Let me change this to black. Okay, let's minimize this a bit. So here, what you wanna do is size it up. Right now it's at a 0.55 inch. Okay, I, what I like to do, I like, uh, I like to make it extra big. All right, so here 0.72, all right. It, you just want it to make it fit our area here. Okay, it might be a little bit too big here, so size it down a bit. All right, it's always adjustable here. And what I like to focus on are these jump stitches. Okay, these here. So we're gonna select the letters and I pushed H, which is the reshape. And I'm just going to adjust our letters. Okay, just so it could closely be right next to each other. So I'm gonna move the M a little closer to this O, just so you don't see that jump stitch so obviously. All right, and I'm doing the same thing to the E. All right, and then same thing with the R. And since this is a script, it's fine that the letters are kind of touching each other lightly. Okay, but if there's any excessive overlap, then I'll move it the other way around. Okay, so we got that good to go. I'm going to do different types of lettering just to kind of give you an idea of all the different styles that we can do. Okay, but this is kind of the most straightforward one here. Once we got this, we're going to duplicate this one. Duplicate, bam, bam. Okay, so I'm just gonna add a sand stitch around it. And let's check out the details. Okay, so here, really what, what I wanna do here is just set up a template. That way, if I need to change names or I need to make any, any other ones, so I like to do the first template as perfect as can be. That way I'm just swapping out names. Let me do the name, um, the names for the name settings first. Okay, so I don't want auto split. I don't really have to worry about auto split, but just in case auto spacing, that's fine, 0.38. Underlay, I'm going to put a, let's put right here, center run, uh, double zigzag just to give it some good definition. H, let me adjust this E a bit. Let me bring it a little closer to that M. All right, so I got that. You wanna make sure all your settings is good, so we got that. We have a pull comp, that's fine, 0.17. So let's look at our sand stitch, so 0.38, that's fine, underlay. Let's put a um, center run with a double zigzag. That's cool. Okay, give it some good definition. Here, let's change over to metric. Okay, let's go three. Uh, let's go three point five. I think that should be all right. 
okay so here okay we're looking at the most basic basic type of name badge you can go with okay um, I think 3.5 is pretty good okay if I was to put this on a hat so I am going to make some that are gonna go on hats uh, I might go from 3.5 or 4 millimeters okay but final stitch out is 3.6 by the time the, the sand stitches kind of go out all right but we'll keep it at this 3.6 okay um i think some variations that you'll see you'll probably see the names a little smaller uh traditionally uh, i've seen on name badges it's kind of like a little bit smaller uh here i like my name badges to be a little bit more bold and to kind of stand out a bit all right so this is all preferences okay the size of your text is all preference and of course if they need a first name and a last name of course it's going to be smaller okay also if if they need a logo in here right your names are going to become a little bit smaller but since i'm only putting uh one name one last name then it's kind of easier to make it bigger all right so this is this first one okay now let's change the type, the different type of variations. So once we have our first template, it's easy to copy and paste, especially once my settings is correct. Uh, it's less work at the very end when I'm trying to do my settings. So I'm gonna select my patch here and just copy and paste here, okay? So I'm gonna just paste this here, all right? And what I'm going to do here, okay, what I want to do here, I want to give some variation and I want to go with a envelope type lettering. Okay, so let's kind of give it this kind of this cool balloon look. Okay, I want to match it. I want to match this shape. Okay, so I'm going to put the reshape. Okay, with the reshape. Most, most all softwares have reshape tools and this type of lettering here. Okay, so what I want to do here. Just kind of put it in the shape of the oval okay kind of go with that shape H and then we can make this a you could either make this a, a tad bigger like this or a tad smaller all right but I'm just gonna make overall everything a little smaller all right bam bam okay look good here all right so of course you have so much variation when you're dealing with name badges let me go ahead and do one more here for this one so for this one actually i'm going to delete this let me copy this one Okay, and what you can do if you're changing names, okay, if we're going to change names, so let's let's say I'm going to put my first name, okay, I could just adjust it here to the right, update text, okay, and it updates it, and my settings, okay, the distance should kind of be saved a bit, all right, but if I have overlaps or little gaps, okay, I could fix that. Bam, right there. All right, and let's do one more. Let's grab this one. Bring down. All right, and let's do something different. Let me grab this. And also, if you don't want it all capitalized, sometimes you don't want to have it capitalized. Sometimes it's easier to read if you just do it the uh, traditional way. Okay, so same thing here, you want to select your text. You wanna adjust it here so we can move it to the right a bit. All right, cause you don't wanna see that, that jump stitch, all right? Cause sometimes it's so obvious, you want it to be kind of tipping, touching the letter next to it. All right, and then we're gonna do the same thing. So same thing, okay? So a lot of times uh, people are gonna prefer this way where it's just uh, uppercase the first letter is uppercase and then the rest okay 
it's all preference all right the only thing with uppercase right it's a little bit more bold this one okay I think this one where it kind of matches the shape okay since the uppercase they're all kind of like um, initially they're the same size it makes it a little easier to make the shape here all right so we got this going on here all right so these are really for your oval shapes and here on the background, as you see, it's blank. Okay, that is because I am going to stitch these on twill. So it saves a lot of stitches. All right, makes you move faster. It, it cuts down on the price. Okay, because if you're going 100% stitch, um, price is going to be significantly higher. Okay, so I have, uh, this is kind of like a square a square badge with the rounded corners okay another one that's very popular when it's time to trace our squared okay what I like to do I like to put a guide kind of where my where I'm going to start turning that way I could have the same turning point on both top and bottom okay so let's say like right here we start turning and then the same thing here Okay, that way our shape is consistent. Okay, so let's see. Starts bending about here, and you'll see what I'm talking about when when I'm digitizing this. All right. So let's go ahead. Let's get close shape. Okay, so my first click here. Then I'm gonna look for the next side. Okay, right here. And then somewhere down here in the middle is my first rounded click. And then here is a sharp turn. Now I'm going straight again, finding this sharp turn. Okay, we're going for a curve turn here. Sharp turn here. And let's go straight here. And let's get a round corner round turn here let's go with a straight line here and let's go straight here and this should be the last click oh wait one more for this curved one all right then bam bam all right so let's put a straight line right here all right and bam all right looks good and once I have my template here that's all I need okay that's all I need I can grab this, copy, take it over here and paste. All right, so this is my template. Everything is gonna revolve around this shape here. Change this color and let's make it sand stitch. Same thing, same settings, okay. Uh, bam, bam, underlay, we want center run with a double zigzag and Let's put 3.5. All right. And then same thing here. We just copy this. All right. Copy. Drag over here. All right. I got kind of like the ones that I'm going to stitch out right now. So what I want to do, I want to stitch these out and I want to put them on a hat. Okay, I want to put some on a hat. So as you see here, this will be for my digitizer hat. Okay, and really where I got kind of inspired with this one, this is kind of like the badge that really inspired me. Okay, because I think this is one of like the greatest, greatest all time timeless name badge. Okay, logo slash logo, right? But just as an example, okay, this is like classic right here. Okay, so kind of. I'm excited about this one here okay these are all 3.5 and let's see let's let's take the total distance here uh, let's put it on inches okay so we're looking at 15.5 by 8.6 okay so I'm going to use my 10 by 19 mighty hoop to knock this one out all right let's push play again Make sure is that the order okay that I'm stitching in 
is in the order that, that I want. And if not, you're just moving stuff around, okay? Okay, for this project, I'm going to use the 10 by 19 Mighty Hoop, okay? Material-wise, I'm going to keep it very, very basic. So we just have our cutaway, two pieces of cutaway. And just one thing real quick. So I've been using this one for the longest, all right? And I think it's time to retire this guy, okay? Actually, we can easily just change out the rotary cutter, all right? But I do want to go ahead and use this bigger one. And it has a nice grip to it. All right, so I do want to break it in with this project here. Okay, so really every embroidery shop, all right, every embroidery shop has to have one of these, okay? It's just, it's just so much easier to cut cutaway, twill, fabric, okay? Especially when it's laying on flat, you can get a nice, clean, straight line. All right, and then this one, as you can see, let me see, as you can see, this one is a tad bit bigger. All right, so there's more surface area. It glides a little bit smoother. And look at this handle right here. What I like about it, right, especially these rotary, is how easy, right? It's like butter right there. Okay, so we got that there. We got one here. Let's do that one more time. Okay, we move that out the way. Okay, so we're good here. Let me just show you one last thing. going to add a little 505 spray okay what I would recommend is put some some cardboard or something to kind of protect your space all right so we got here put this spray it's a little all right, and then we do it all over again. Okay. This just prevents any slippage or any loss of registration. It's not really a mandatory step, okay, to do something like this. And it just keeps everything nice and clean, nice and flat. All right. So, making sure I'm under. All right, then we want to get a good snap. Make sure underlay is nice and good. And, all right, we got a good snap. All right, so, all right, so we got it hooked up, ready to go. Let's check our backside. Okay, so our backside, nice and clean, nice and flat. We have everything sticking out you definitely don't want any of your cutaway inside your hoops okay you want everything overlap right here as you can see I could have been a little bit more conservative with our twill but it's no big deal okay no big deal you don't want to be too conservative where you can't even tighten up your fabric all right so we're good to go here so let's go ahead, let's take it to the machine. All right, so let's go ahead, let's put this on. And FYI, this is the biggest hoop that you can use on the Recoma and on many similar machines. Okay, so this is the 10 by 19. Okay, of course, we always want to trace. All right, we got a good trace. Now we are ready to go. Let's push start. 63,500 stitches. Let's go.
All right, there we go. We're all done. All right, so we are off the machine. Okay, we're looking nice and good. So we got it at a very good size. I like this size. So we're looking at three and a half wide. Now it's the fun part where we're going to heat press our adhesive backing. So I'm gonna size this a bit smaller. All right, we're good here. Also, as an extra, you could cut these out here. These little, you could trim these off. We could trim these off. It's it's no big deal. You could keep them on. It's just we only have we only had two cuts per patch, so. All right, it's ready for the heat press. So materials for the heat press, okay. I'm gonna put this down on the bottom. So this is the heat press pillow. And everything I have here, I'll link it down below. What we're going to do, we're going to put stitches face down. Adhesive material, okay, so sticky side. There's a plastic side and a paper side. So you want the adhesive side down, the plastic side. Okay, so you want to cover your stitches. And then once we're ready to heat press, we put the Teflon and bam, we heat press it. All right, let's go to the heat press. All right, I'm here at the heat press. It's ready to go. Okay, I got the heat press nation. This is a real strong workhorse right here. All right, I'll link the link down below if you want to get the information on that. Okay. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to put my pillow down. Okay. I want the back side up here. I have my adhesive. Okay, right on top of that. All right, I got it perfect right there. Now, you want to get your Teflon, Teflon sheets. And let's go. All right, you want to give it a nice, nice pressure. All right, so that's number one here. Okay, I was cutting it, but I didn't hit record. So let me do that one more time. Okay. I'll do it with this one here. All right, so I got my ginger. All right, so what, what I like to do, okay, put some guides here, just so as I'm cutting, uh, this extra scrap can just fall off easy. Cutting very close, let me see. Yeah, we got a good angle right here. All right, I'm trying to cut with the camera in front of me. All right, so. Rough cut right here, okay? So we always got the rough cut, all right? But overall, it was good. You just wanna cut these big uh, little stragglers that we got right here. All right, now, okay, so if you got any like kind of little pieces hanging out, that's why these, these, these scissors, they're very accurate. Like they cut very close to what you're trying to cut. All right, now the magic sauce is this right here. All right, so this is the one I'm going to um, heat press onto my hat. But the magic sauce, okay, it's my lighter here. All right. So, 
just want to lightly hit the sides. Okay, it's just going to seal all your small little loose threads. Okay. And the cleaner you cut, the easier it is to clean. Alright, but this one's ready to go. Okay, let's see what we got here. Alright. And what that really does, it just seals any of your fraying, any extra that you have. All right, so let me see. All right, so it's very clean. All right, very clean. Of course, you could always get it more accurate, but one thing when you're cutting your stitches, you do not want to get too close. All right, so I got the hat heat press ready to go. Okay, I got my, I'll be using this hat, the white hat. Okay, the Yupon. Let's see, it is 80% cotton, 40% polyester. Okay, so I got my pillows here. Okay, which you'll see when I use them. This press, it came with three. Okay, it came with the smaller ones, the one that I use. Okay, but you have thicker ones here. And you can also buy Okay, optional one. I I, th I forgot how much I paid for this one. Okay, I feel like I get more heat with the thinner one. All right, but I might experiment and uh, play with different settings for this one because this one, what's good about this, it kind of has weight to it, so it'll hold down your patches. All right, but for the most part, I use the thinner one. Okay, so let's go ahead. Let's attach it. All right, once we got the pressure, okay, we're going to take out the backing here. All right, so the sticky part, ready to go here. All right, then we're just gonna line it up nice and clean. We kinda wanna push down a bit. If it gets hot, just grab another one. All right. Good to go. So I'm trying to show you different angles, how it kind of all right. All right, let's look at that. This looks super clean right here. All right, and then you kind of look to see if you have any gaps. And we have zero gaps, all right? Because this shape here, it's like perfect. It's like made for heat press, okay? All right, and this, this type of hat, okay, it pretty much is compatible with any, any type of business, any industry you're in. Okay, it'll work perfect, all right? Especially the service industry. Okay, this is all day. These are hats all day. And once you get and once you get into a rhythm, you're knocking out these patches and these hats nice and easy. 
All right, so thank you very much for stopping by today. If you have any questions, any comments, leave it down below, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace out.